but experts believe that the reality is far worse. The pandemic is thought to have originated on the 1st of December last year, when a man in Wuhan was taken ill and later categorised as a victim of COVID-19. It was widely reported, but the virus had started in a market where a range of live animals are sold for human consumption. But rational debate about the virus has been made more difficult by a propaganda war between the US and China, with both of these countries accusing each other of being the source. And as the number of new cases starts to rise again in parts of China, our correspondent John Sudworth looks at the latest evidence about the origins of coronavirus and what might come next for the authorities in Beijing. Wuhan, ground zero, a city of 11 million people, through the streets of which an unseen silent killer took its first steps late last year. And where the cemeteries hold the first to fall victim to its deadly effects. But six months on, the origin of this virus is still unclear. Most scientists believe China's wet markets should be the focus. The virus, known to come initially from bats, was likely passed to humans, they say, via another species. Do people in Wuhan eat wildlife? We don't have customs like that, he says. Across town, though, this market, connected to some of the first virus cases, has been closed. Wild animals were traded here, but the testing of samples has now ruled it out as the source. But there's another theory. For more than a decade, Wuhan has been at the forefront of a major project to collect bat viruses from remote Chinese caves. As a result, there are few buildings in the world surrounded by as much controversy as this one right now, at the centre of the US president's accusation that the virus leaked from a lab. Inside, researchers have been studying coronaviruses and sometimes genetically altering them to better understand, they say, how pandemics might arise. Well, the lab leak theory is dismissed by the Chinese government and by some scientists as an outlandish conspiracy. We are told to stop filming. On state TV, the lab has dismissed the allegations of a leak. This is pure fabrication. We first received the sample on the 30th of December. Before that, we didn't even know it existed. How could it have leaked from our lab when we never had it? Scientists have looked at the structure of the virus itself, in particular its protein spikes, which are unusually good for a coronavirus of this type at binding to human cells. This analysis, by five experts in the field, finds that it was not purposefully manipulated. We do not believe that any type of laboratory-based scenario is plausible, it says, a conclusion now widely accepted. To deny a possibility when a scientist should always keep an open mind... But some scientists say it's flawed and based in part on accepting the lab's denials. One of those possibilities has to be that this came out of a lab. There's, you know, it's, it's a possibility. We can't say it's not. And for my colleagues to say it's not, I'm a bit astounded because you can't say a negative. You, you know, certainly no one's proved a negative here. China has been developing an origin theory of its own, with state media and officials suggesting it may have come from elsewhere. It's an idea gaining traction in Wuhan. It came from the US, this man says. They've tested the sequences. The US had it first. Liu Oqing, a former Communist Party official, died of coronavirus in January. On the banks of Wuhan's East Lake, I meet his son, Liu Peien. He's angry at China's handling of the outbreak, but says calls for an international inquiry offer little hope. If China or the U.S. investigate, the final result will come from a group of politicians. It will be a report infected by politics.
the origin of the virus is now meaningless to me. With Wuhan's lockdown receding into memory, the limits of science and the demands of politics may mean the biggest question is never answered. Where did the virus come from? Well, John has uh, now returned uh, to Beijing from Wuhan and joins us now. John, can we talk about these calls for an official investigation? Uh, what is the likelihood in any event that that might happen, do you think? Well, Hugh, China initially pushed back against that idea, but it has now agreed under some international pressure, although there is no detail on what the remit will be, what the staffing will be, and the Chinese president has said it will have to wait anyway until the pandemic is over. And on that front, there is some complicating news here in Beijing. In the last few days, we have seen a new outbreak, 137 confirmed cases, centred around a market out of which much of the capital's food supply comes. And it is clear the authorities here are deeply concerned. Hundreds of flights have been cancelled. Uh, there are uh, restrictions on travel movements and all of the city's school children have been sent home. This is a real setback for a country that thought it had this virus beaten. And it is a reminder to other countries coming out of lockdown of the constant need to watch out for that second spike. You have to assume, Hugh, on top of all this, that China will have done its own investigations into the origins. The most likely route, the animal route of infection, perhaps by testing reservoirs of infection in various species, perhaps even also looking at those labs. If it has done any of those things, though, it's not made any of the results public. John, many thanks again uh, for the latest there in Beijing. John Sudworth uh, after that special report from Wuhan.